raindrop effect. Yeah, today we are going to create raindrop effect. So to get started and create this effect, you need a texture with some features. I put the download link to that texture in the description, but I also give you some hint to how to create this texture in Blender. If you are not interested in Blender section, you can skip to go that part. There's a time chapter on this video, which you can do that easily. So this is a texture that I have, and this texture has four channels of information in that. The red and green channel are X and Y component of normal map. This texture has no Z component of normal map, and this is not a big deal. You will understand that when we get to shader code. In the blue channel, each of these big raindrop is colored with a random grayscale value. This will help us to randomize the animation of each raindrop in shader code based on their grayscale values. And in alpha channel, we have some small droplets of rain which are fixed and are not animated. In the real world also, a small droplet of water, because of the surface tension, will stay at their position and they are fixed. So this mask will tell which of the droplet will stay at their position and which will move. You will understand all of this when we go to the shader code, but first let me explain how I created this texture. And one thing to note, this texture which I created is not very good. At least I'm not satisfied with that. And that is because I have not a good artistic skill. And if you do and you are okay with sharing that, I will be very happy about that. So I am in Blender. First I make a plane, then make a sphere. Just copy this sphere multiple times, join them together and now go to the sculpt mode. In a sculpt mode I used only grab brush and a smooth brush to make some different raindrop. Now copy them and add more variation and then I just add a smaller drop I just separate them by moving them into a different object so we have two objects one for bigger drop and one for a smaller drop I also delete the bottom vertices of the drain drop and keep only those vertices which are above the plane and I create a material for my plane create the image texture in that and select the raindrops first and my plane last and I bake the normal map texture. Well, the first part is done, we baked the normal map. Just save this image. So now we should generate a random grayscale color for each big raindrop. Fortunately, with the help of the geometry node, that is possible. So create a new geometry node for bigger drop, and in a geometry node, add mesh island node. This node will give you an index number for each mesh island, and we are going to use that. After that, I just create an output for my geometry node. Basically, we want to calculate a random number between 0 and 1 for each island for using that in Blender shader. I am going to create a float output node, and I call it island random. Well, now go to the modifier tab, output attribute. And here, just create a new attribute for our output. Create a random value node to generate a random number. I don't want a raindrop with the grayscale value of the 0, so I put the minimum value to 0 0.1 and the maximum value to 1. And then go to the shading tab. Here, I delete the principal BSDF node and I add a mission node. And then I added an attribute node. And in the name section, just type island random finally connect this to the emission node and we have a different color for each island just bake the emission of the big raindrop in the texture here i have some problem with some of this big drop and i will fix them with gimp now for a smaller raindrop add another material remove principal bsdf and add a white emission node and bake that also. Okay, we have our texture, now we should combine them in one texture. So for mixing this channel, I use GIMP, you can use also Photoshop or other program. I open normal map here, now go to the color, component, and click on decompose. And this will decompose the different channel to layers. Here delete blue layers, and add other two grayscale image which we made with Blender. Go to Color, Component, 
and compose. Choose RGBA for color model and check the channels to be in correct place. Then click OK. Just please note when you want to save that, just check save color value with transparent pixel. Well done. So the first part is finished and now let's go into Godot to use this texture for raindrop effect. So here I am in Godot. Here I just create a simple shader code and this is my base texture. I define sampler to the uniform for albedo, normal map and roughness of my base texture. Down here I just scale my texture five times and then I just set my albedo, normal map and roughness values. I hope up to this point everything was clear. Now let's add a raindrop effect. Here I just define another sampler to the uniform for my raindrop and I set the drop texture that I created in Blender to it. Here I read from that texture and I put the result inside a vector for variable which is called drop. Now I want to create its normal map. Well, as we know, the first and the second component of our uh, drop are X and Y of the normal map. And I put the Z component to be 1. Well, you might ask that is not correct and we don't put the exact value for the Z component. But in normal maps, Z component are mostly close to 1. And now setting that to 1 is not a big deal. So it just works and that is good. Now for testing, set normal map to drop normal map. And as you can see, it is working, but we don't want this like this. I just create another float uniform, which is called mix ratio. And here I just mix this normal map with original normal map. Now, if I change the mix ratio, as you can see, this will blend between this normal map and the base normal map. So what we want is that only in some part, this normal map will change. And in those parts, also normal map have some animation. So I define a float variable which is called drop mix ratio. This variable is going to determine the mix ratio for us. For now, I just want to animate the big raindrop. As we know, the big raindrop are in the blue channel. So here I write drop.b. Now we want to animate that. The way the raindrop works is that at first the rain fall on the surface and then it is going to absorb slowly on the surface of that material. So at each time this rain is going to decrease its effect. For that I just subtract time from that. And I multiply time by a smaller number to reduce the speed of the animation. We want to mix ratio be always between 0 and 1. So we use fract function here to do that. So let me show you this effect on the graph. First, when the rain hit the surface, the mix ratio is 1. And then slowly, it's reduced by time. And when it's arrived to 0, it will jump back to 1. So it seems that another raindrop hit the surface. And as each of these raindrops start at a different grayscale value, they are going to be different and random. Let's put this inside normal map mix ratio and see what it does. So you can see a jump in entire texture. That is because we subtract from black value too. So I set my drop ratio to albedo to see what is happening. As you can see, we subtract from entire texture. So the way you can correct this is by multiplying the drop mix ratio to the blue channel of the drop texture. Because in the blue channel of the drop texture, where there is no raindrop, it is black and the value is zero. As you can see by multiplying this to mix ratio, we also change the overall mix ratio for raindrop in a random way. I mean, in this case, some drop is going to change between 0 0.5 and zero, other drop is going to change between 0 0.8 and zero and so on. And in this case, it look good, so I leave this like this. So now to add the fixed drop, just add alpha channel to this. Very good. Now let's correct roughness with this mix ratio. So as you know, the surface of the water is smooth, so I change the value of the roughness for water drops to zero. 
And at last, I just set my material specular to 0 0.5 and my water specular to 1. Very good. Up to this point, we have a good effect. But I just want to make it better. If you look at some real world example of raindrop, you can see the raindrop is going to modify the texture behind them. I'm not going to create this effect exactly, but I will create something similar to that. Here we are going to modify the texture by a random number. So I define a noise texture. And I read the value of the noise texture here. Then I create another vector tree for deformed texture. Here I just add noise value to the UV. This is the exact thing that I did in my distortion shader video. And now if I visualize my deform albedo, you can see it's deformed a lot. So multiply noise to a small value. Now just blend between this deformed texture and original texture. Okay, very good up to this point. And did you notice there is a much better way to deform texture? Well, it is much better to just create a new deformed UV coordinate and mix that with the original UV coordinate. In that way, you read only one time from Albedo texture and your code is much more efficient. And I leave this to you to correct this. Now let's see what else we can do. Rain does not drop on surface which are facing down. So how we can make this correct? Well, we should use normal vector in word space. If you don't know what I am doing, please watch my video about how to blend in Godot. I will put the link of that video in the description. I explained there, so here I just do it. Well, now everything is working as we want. And I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching and till the next video. Bye.